Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to your quantum entanglement reading for the month of September with me, Jocelyn, the quantum queen. And so, um, as you guys know, these are my astrology reads. We're going to dive into the different energies. I've got the planet alignments here, and that's what we're going to dive into for the next month for you guys, how it's going to be affecting you guys with the entanglements of the planets, okay? So this is for Sagittarius. Or, <laughs> I did not mean that. Don't shoot me. This is Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, okay? Keep in mind that these are general readings, and if you guys would like to book a one-on-one, -on -one, my website information is down below. They are still currently booked up, but they will be opening up very soon. I will announce it on the channel, or you guys can subscribe to my website, and you'll get a notification. You'll get first dibs when they open back up, okay? And as always, just wanted to say thank you for liking, subscribing, and thank you for all the good karma donations. Nice. Okay. So, Scorps. First card, energy, archetypal energy that you'll be experiencing over this next month is the healer. <laughs> nice. I love it. So, interesting. I'm getting some interesting stuff with that. So, the healer. Yeah, maybe you guys are a healer in some way, shape, or form. Like, maybe you are some type of, like, maybe a shaman or you're an energy worker or something like that. Or you're really working on healing yourself because you have the snakes here. So there's a transformation that could be taking place. Also, there's something about the three heads that I'm really being drawn to. Like, I cannot get over that like there could be three different energies oh shit this is what it is scorps so there could be something about a cycle that you've been in and you guys can click the link above where i talk about this whole like kind of rescuer perpetrator or um victim dynamic you could be transforming from that like you could be coming to certain understandings and shedding that vibrational layer of yourself and really transforming, like going through the deep healing of that and coming, bringing like all sorts of fragmented pieces of your energy back together, back into one whole. So let's dive into the individual energies here. What was that? I totally don't do this. There it is. Okay. In your first house, and I'll dive into the planets as we go around, so don't, so no worries, okay? First house, the way you see yourself this month, Scorps, is the Knight of Wands. Kind of back and forth, not gonna lie. So maybe a little bit like unpredictable, like you might do something unpredictable this next month. Because I kind of get the sense you might be back and forth in some type of situation, and I cannot even make, the back, make up that that popped out. So either that's you and your energy and just be cautious because that could be trauma bond energy that I've been talking about. And that could be connected to a certain person that's coming in and out of your life. Okay. So that's why I was saying like, take a look at that and see how that applies because there could be a bit of like law of attraction or an energetic match to your possibly attracting. It's not a bad thing. I can just see that you're kind of like there's something that you're really enthusiastic about going towards that you want to go after. You're passionate about it. You have some type of creativity and passion that's really being stirred within you. And it's maybe making you want to take a leap towards something. But this is always like a, yeah, take a look before you jump. Just look at everything. Take a look at all the factors. Oh, yeah, because look at that. And your second house is the king of swords. Wow. There's something here about your finances. So you could be communicating with a person, possibly an air sign, or you've got fire. So Aries, Leo, Sag, or Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But there's someone here connected to finances that you might be getting advice from, okay? This is a very analytical and intellectual person, okay? Um, interesting. So that could be like a financial advisor or... That could be a lawyer or things like that, but there's someone here that you could be getting financial advice from throughout the next month. Or if it's not a particular person that you're hiring, it could be that you're like educating yourself online or something like that just to give you more confidence. There's an entanglement happening there because look at you trying to shift into a more like uh, mature version of yourself, you know, trying to shift from um, like 
being a knight, right? It doesn't matter on the gender, but there's something here about that you have probably this more masculine energy, surprisingly, Scorps. Like that you've been doing something more on a masculine side of things, but what you're wanting to do is up level and maybe, you know, kind of move into this area where you're more stable and not so like back and forth in an area of your life where it feels a little bit unstable or unpredictable. You have the Knight of Swords. Wow. Okay. So that's coming into your third house. So again, there's something here about communication happening with either an air sign or a lot of, a lot of air energy in their chart. This is a person that, ah, wow. Okay. Let me dive into this because Saturn is going to be retrograde for half of the month in, and it's coming, it's going direct in your third house with communication. So this is good because I kind of get this sense that again, there's communication happening and you see the eyes there. It's just kind of like going into a situation or with a person, eyes wide open, seeing everything because that's also the Virgo energy. It's very grounded. That's why I love the Virgo season. It's just very uh, practical. Um, also, this will be a month of focusing on health and things like that. Then that's probably why you've got the healer card. Maybe you're trying to be a healer, so it's really requiring that you also heal some energetic aspects of yourself as well to bring you up in, in this energy. So you have the magician card. Wow. So four players here. That could be Virgo or Gemini Red there, but the magician card is coming in in your fourth house. So there could be certain things that you're trying to manifest when it comes to home and stability. Okay. Also, some of you guys might be trying to heal from maybe a family member or something because we've got trickery, self-doubt, deceptiveness, insecurities. You could have been dealing with someone like a family member or something that is very insecure and someone could be trying to like uh, kind of bring you in or trying to affect your manifestations okay so that could also be the thing that's making you a bit back and forth because maybe you're taking this person's like opinion or something into consideration and try not to do that and and the more that you focus on healing yourself and bringing your energies back together that's going to dissipate more and more the more that you focus on your alchemy and bringing your cells up in vibration that's going to put all this at ease in your fifth house, we have the Ace of Swords. Okay, I love this because fifth house is creativity, it's self-expression, it can be a hobby or a sport. When you're out doing something, it's going to bring you a lot of clarity and truth. Like say for instance, you go running or something or you do yoga, there's something where all of a sudden your energy is going to become really clear. Like you'll have this relief from some type of deceptive energy or confusion or being back and forth. These moments that you're doing this creative thing is the thing that's probably going to bring you a lot of healing where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the clarity and truth. It's going to pierce right be through a matrix that you've been seeing things through. You have the wheel of fortune. Yeah, perfect. So what I wanted to focus on, Mars is going retrograde in your sixth house. So... Things could be turning in a different direction with your health, okay? Because that's your sixth house of health. Um, so Mars retrograde, it could be that like you're starting to do something with your health and it feels like it requires a lot of effort, okay? Just straight up. And it might be kind of hard to get the ball going, okay? Like whatever this is for you, whether it's like, sticking to a diet or, you know, starting a workout routine. There's just something here that you're doing different. You're starting to incorporate and it's going to feel very slow. All right. And you might also kind of go in and out with it because it won't be so easy at first. So at times you'll just kind of like want to give up or you, you might be in and out with it. One day you do it and the next day not just do what you can do. Okay. Don't push yourself too much. And that's why I'm saying take it really, really slow, because if you try to go in too hard or too much, you'll want to give up and it will exhaust your energy too quickly. So try to like incorporate it slowly. Just make small promises to yourself and work with your body realistically with where it's at and just start small. Okay. In your seventh house, we've got the eight of pentacles. So 
this is awesome because that's your seventh house of partnership. So there could be a partnership here. That's why I love this eight of pentacles because that's like pinky swear it. So there could be someone here. Um, there's a positive potential between you and another relationship. Uh, right now, I feel though, if this is a current connection that you're dealing with right now, it's there's a lot of focus on work or finances. Some of you guys, that could also be business partnership. So just throwing that out there um in case and it could be this knight of wands that you're still kind of back and forth about a particular connection so just keep that in mind we'll dive into more clarity though you got the seven of pentacles coming up next in your eighth house that's exactly what i was saying that's your house so when it comes to areas that's death sex transformation taxes so there could be something that you like need to start out small okay this is long-term success. So this is about making long-term lifestyle choices or um, making changes in that way. So that's why I was saying seven of pentacles. That's about planting the seeds and it's divine timing, letting it grow day by day. So there could be certain things that you're trying to integrate, that you're trying to plant into your existence that you know will bring about fruition, but start small. Don't go in too heavy and fast, okay? It will turn into long-term success. You have in the ninth house, perfect. That's the Sagittarius house, and this is the freaking Sagittarius card. So, and it is funny that I almost called you guys Sagittarius at the beginning. So, that is your higher knowledge and learning that also could be travel, all right? And there could be something about like, you're getting ready, because Knight of Wands, it could be that you're ready, getting ready to do something, and you're having to kind of come into this equilibrium, this conscious and subconscious, kind of calming your energy, preparing to make a shift, preparing to make a jump towards something. So I can see that, that's a big time emphasis. But with it coming into your higher learning and knowledge, I think that what you're kind of having to do, there could be an overstimulation that's happening there from the Mars energy, that you like have all these high ideas, you have all these like cool things that you wanna do and start up. And it's just about like staying calm and balanced, okay? Because this Mars energy is going to be really intense. And I'm not saying don't go after things. It's just like really continue to focus on bringing your energies all back together. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. All right. Nice. We have the Six of Wands coming into your 10th house when it comes to career. This is cool because... There's an advancement that's gonna happen here and you've also got Venus coming in here. So where you're seeing relief throughout this next month will be something that you do and goals that you're working towards when it comes to your career. Cause it's almost like, and that's the Venus, that's love and that she's gonna soothe out energies that feel a little bit intense here. So that's your focus here is really working on your career brings you peace of mind. Just because you're almost needing to do that to feel like you're accomplishing something, that you're moving up in a level in your life. So as long as you're doing those things every day, that's what's helping you to feel calm and balanced because you're working towards something. Your 11th house is the 10 of swords. So that's an ending to some type of social networking, maybe some connections in your life. Um, there's just something coming to an end there. And you've had a lot of confliction about it. So it's actually crazy that you have the Ace of Swords directly across here because there could have been something that you felt like you were involved in relationships or environments where it was like splitting your energy too much because it was almost taking you away from your goals and what you were wanting to achieve for yourself. And so that's where this ending is possibly the thing also that's going to bring you peace of mind. Okay, just saying straight up because that's crazy that that popped out that way. And in your 12th house, yeah, nice. We have the Eight of Wands. I love that because, so there's your Mercury, which is going to be in the 12th house, and you have the Eight of Wands. Both of those are communication, both of those. So there could be a lot of communication taking place. Um, also about turning that wheel, because you got over here, Mars is really highlighting your health because it's trying to get energy to so turn in a different direction. Also, this is about having enough energy um, because I kind of get the sense here that you guys might be at times feeling a bit drained. That's that Mars energy. So when you start to feel that, that's why I was saying 
do what you can but don't drain yourself like don't try to push yourself too much just try to like have something that you do every day that makes you feel like you're still accomplishing something that you can keep yourself in a high vibration but don't move too fast okay like don't try to do way too much just go slow slow incorporations but do what you can do like i don't if intuitively you're feeling to do something do it by all means but i just get the sense here that also there's going to be a lot of communication that happens like maybe over social media things that you're educating yourself with to make these changes to your health because mars is really highlighting that for you okay so scorps i'm going to dive into the extended see whatever messages want to come out so if you guys want to join me over there feel free go down below click on the vimeo link and i'll see you over there but scorpio if this is where we leave things I'm sending you guys so much love, wishing you all the very best, and I'll see you in your next reading. Take care.